Hi, this is part two of building a context list with Postgres and Vue.js. In the previous video, we created our database and built the API using Postgres. Now we will build a website using Vue.js. I'm in my terminal here in the directory that we created in the last video, and I'll start by installing the Vue command line tool. I'm using node version 13.1.0. I'm going to install the Vue CLI using npm. Now it's installed, so we'll create a new view app. So I'll type in view create and then my app's name. So I'll go with contacts app. We'll stick with the default. And now it's downloading the dependencies and creating the app. All right, the project is ready and we have instructions here to start the dev server. So I'm going to go into the directory of the app and I'll run the dev server to see what we have. Okay, it's listening on localhost 8080. Let's see what that is. This is the default view app that will serve as the base for our app. I've kept the development server running and opened the directory in my editor. In the public directory, I have the fav icon and the index file. This is what will actually be served to the browser. There is the placeholder element here for the view app and any build files will be auto injected like this comment says. In the source directory, there is the assets directory, which has the view logo, components, which has a hello world component, the app component, which is the main component for a view app and the main JS file. So it imports the app component from the app file and mounts it on the app div in the index file here. Now I'm going to replace the default page with the template for the contacts app. So I'll go back to the databases repo. Under example, there's a file called index template HTML. So I'll just copy it and replace the index file with it. If I save now and go back, this is the template file, but we need to adapt it to our view app. So I'll take out the contents of the body and replace that with the div, with the ID of app, like we had before. So I'll go back to the app component and paste in what I took out of the index file. Save, go back, and we get an error saying that the hello world component has been registered but not used. This makes sense because we replaced the code that uses it with the template which doesn't use it. So for now we can just remove any references to it and also delete the cells here because we don't need that anymore. And now if I save and go back, it should work. We get the template file, but now it's an actual view app. We can validate that by looking at views dev tools and you can see the, the components here. Okay, now what we need to do is fetch our contacts from, from the database and then display them on the page. So I'll go back to the app component and we're not gonna do anything too complex here. We're just going to store the contacts in the components data object. So I'll define the data function and this will set the initial data object. So I'll return an object here with a key named contacts and it'll be an empty array for now. And we're going to hook into the created event. So once a component is created, this code that's inside this function will be run. So let's say this dot load contacts. This is something that we haven't defined yet. So let's do that now. In the methods property, we can define any methods that we want. And it define load contacts. Once the component is loaded, and created, this code will run, it will call this function. And here we'll actually connect our API and load the contacts. And we can safely use async functions because all this code will be transpiled. So we don't have to worry about browser support or any of that stuff. Let's call the API, define contacts as fetch the API that we created in the last video. And let's not forget the wait. Actually, we need to wrap this in a try catch block. So try fetch the contacts. 
and on any errors. We need to do something with these errors. For now, let's just display the error on the page. So add an error item to our data object, initialize it to an empty string, and go back here, find a paragraph, and show our error here. And let's give it a color because why not? If we get any errors, we'll set this error to the error that we get and save it. Now, I don't have the server running, so if we go back to our view app now, we should get an error that says failed to load this. Right, Eastlint is looking after us here. We've assigned a, ver a variable but haven't used it. So for now, let's, let's get rid of the assignment just to see everything working. Go back and we see our error here, failed to fetch. And if we look at the console, it says connection refused because nothing is running on port 3000. So I'll actually run the server now, connecting, connected. Now we should be able to go back, reload, and not get any errors. Awesome. I'll return this and we have the response toward in contacts. Let's save them to our data object. So we'll say this dot contacts equals contacts. And because this is the response object that the fetch API returns, we need to call the JSON function, which parses the response as JSON and converts it into an actual object. If we save this now, go back, Again, no errors, but if you go look at the view dev tools, click on our component, you can see the contacts here. It says promise, right? This returns a promise, so we need to prefix it with await. Look again, contacts array of 10, and we have our actual contacts here. Awesome. Now let's put them on the page. This is the example contact that was in the template. So let's extract it into its own component that we can use. Go back to the hello world component. We can delete all of this, set up the template, paste it in. And for the script, we will accept a prop of contact. Rename the file to contact. Go back to app.view and import it. Import contact from components contact.view. We can define it in the components object. We imported it, defined it here, but haven't used it. So we should get an error here. And we did. It's registered, but not used. Now we need to take the, the contacts that we received and render them using the contact component to do a little bit of state management here. Let's add a new data object in state. And we'll start with loading. Once we have the contact, we can set the state to ready. And if we have any errors, we'll set the state to error. This is very simple state handling, but it's sufficient for our needs here. And we can use the state variable here. So if state is error, we will show this paragraph containing the error. If the state is ready, it means we have our contacts, so we can display them on the page here. And if it's loading, you can just say loading contacts. Here we'll use the contact component that we just defined. Remember it accepts a contact prop. So what we need to do here is loop over the contacts that we received and for each one render a contact component. For contact in contacts, we need to define a key which is a unique property of each contact. We can just use the ID here. So we'll bind key to ID and we'll bind contact to contact. This should loop over every contact in the contacts array that we get from our API and render a contact component passing it the contact that it loaded. So we've got 10 contacts here, but they're all the same. Let's address that. Let's go back to our code, look at the contact component. And we've received a contact prop here, but we haven't done anything with it. So let's substitute the placeholder values here with the actual contact data. So for the name, we'll use contact.name, phone, address. Favorite colors will need a bit of special handling. So let's go back and look at what we have so far. We've got the name, phone number, and address. But for the colors, if you look at the data that we receive, each contact has a favorites object, and within it, a colors array. 
that contains the favorite colors. For this, we won't bind the values directly in here, but we'll use a computed value. So let's bind this to favorite colors. And we can define the computed property here, favorite colors. First, let's get the colors array. So colors equals this contact.favorites.colors. But here's the thing, because the favorites column in the database is stored as JSON, we can't know for sure that the colors property exists. So we just need to check for its existence here. So if not colors, which means this returned null, we'll return no colors. Now we have a colors array here. So let's return colors and join them with separating commas. This is a computed property and not an actual function. So we can just reference it as a variable and not a function. We'll go back. There we go. Got our favorite colors. We can exit the dev tools here. This is pretty much it. Like I said, this is a very simple app, but the purpose is to show how to use all these different technologies together. Let's recap. We've got our view app, got a bit of state management here. If there's an error, we show the error. If we're ready, we show our contacts. And if it's loading, we show loading message. This is where we actually connect to the API. So we've set up our view app and we've connected to our API. In the next video, we will deploy the app that we just built along with the API to production. So we will create a droplet and deploy all of this on that droplet. And we will also take care of this URL because this is fine for debugging or local development. But for a production app, we will need to do this a bit differently. So we'll look at that in the next video.